My name is Miriam Naiman. I'm a senior advisor at Nefesh Benefesh, and I'm one of the people on the Lone Soldier hotline that you all have been shared with. It's a very important hotline. It's for parents of Lone Soldiers, and we encourage you to pick up the phone and call. It's a 24-7 hotline to give you someone to talk to, to listen, to guide where we can, to give resources when we can. I'd like to begin by, introdu by introducing Noya Govrin. Noya is the director of our Lone Soldier Department. You may have already heard from her. And before Dr. Rappaport, um opens the session, Noya. So good evening, everyone, or uh, good, good morning, depends where you are in the globe. Uh, my name is Noya Govrin, and like Miriam said, I'm the director of the Lone Soldier Program for the past 11 years. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, like you, I'm also, I'm Israeli, but I'm a mother of uh, two combat soldiers who are now, one of them is in the Gaza border and the other one is in the north. And uh, like you, the parents, I'm going through days of concern, of fears, of uh, of a lot of hope sometimes. And um, it's been uh, not easy. I'm trying to stay strong and positive and uh, a little bit to sleep during the night. But uh, I can only imagine how difficult it is for you, the parents, to be so far, so far away from your chayalim at this specific time. Um, I want to send you a big hug and strength, and just to let you know that we are here to support you. Like Miriam said, we have opened since the war has started a hotline for parents. It's active 24-7. And uh, the number is in New Jersey number 1201-605-7440. So please reach out to us. As you know, it's a uh, wartime. Um, and I will not, and the team who is answering might not have all the time the answer that you are looking for, but we can try to listen. We can, we'll take the information and I promise you that we'll do everything that we can do in every subject to assist you. Uh, our thought and prayer are with you, the parents, uh, especially with those who are protecting us uh, in various fronts and around the country. And I can only wish to ourself uh, to see you very soon coming and hugging your children. I'm waiting for you. Um, and I want to introduce uh, Dr. Evelyn Rappaport. Uh, Dr. Rappaport is an international clinical consultant, supervisor, and coach. She has been a clinical supervisor and visiting faculty of the Adassa Hospital in medical psychology. Um, so, Vivakasha. Dr. Rappaport, it's yours. Thank you so much. And um, I was saying how privileged I feel to address all of you, to provide you with some resources and what a tremendous team you have here who is in has your back at all times and is doing a tremendous job providing resources to your children, to you. And actually in Israel, that's what I find so remarkable, the inspiring resiliency and the commitment to contribute and to donate that your children are also getting. There is no one here who does not volunteer. We stand 24 seven. Everybody is doing something towards helping. And that to me is the most inspiring and admirable piece that brings a lot of comfort. And I hope it brings comfort to you. The resiliency, despite what is going on, is 
it's a remarkable phenomenon that I don't think exists in any other country like it does here. Now, I'm, uh, I've been here for close to two years. Uh, I was living in the United States and working professionally for 65 years. At age six, I was born in Israel and at age six, I left. And what I want you to know about that is that I've been here many times working, contributing and visiting my grandchildren. And during the pandemic, when I couldn't get in, that was the worst. And I turned to my husband and said, it's time for me to go home, you're invited. And that's how it happened. What I tell people when they ask me, how is it that I've gotten into the trauma work that I do, and I do it almost 24 seven, I tell the story of what happened when I was four years old and during the Sinai War, we lived in Haifa and that was the first time in history that the Egyptians shelled Haifa from the sea. They had never attacked from the sea before. And what I remember is being in the bomb shelter with my friends, with my family. I, re I have shadow memories of something like a pajama party, sheets on the ground, parents there, their friends there, my friends there. And the memory of that, I think, is what really has contributed to my passion for this kind of work and working with people in the bomb shelters and wherever they may be is both a source of giving, but it's also a source of gratification for all of us here. So I want now to address and share a few items with you. I will not speak for as long as I'd like to because I wanna leave ample time for all of you to ask questions, which we will have. I just wanna share a few points of information and perhaps, um, and many resources that will be available to you. And you will get a lot of this in writing from what I understand. There's a recording of this, but also there will be things sent out by the teams, giving you a lot of the information we'll be covering. And what I wanna first invite you to really hear and feel is the level of embracing your children here. They are family, no matter what happens. And in your absence, we try to fill in the best we can to embrace them, help them and support them. There are many of you out there, and I'm sure you know this, but feeling it is a whole different process. So please take a moment and try to take in the love and compassion that we give both to you and to your children. And just give it a 30 seconds because what you hear and what you feel takes a little more time then we give it, but just take a moment and take in the experience of being held because that is what we're doing for your children as well. And we hope to provide the space for you to feel that as well. Wow, this makes me very emotional and you'll forgive me if um, I express those emotions through my actions, my face, and everything else. Okay, so what I wanna start with is to speak to you about the unbearable acute stress of the unknown, which you're all experiencing. It's the hardest to bear in any situation. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we've all are in a position of accepting the unknown, and working with it. There's no way to avoid it. And if we don't accept it, we'll just spend a lot of energy fighting it off. And that's something really important to say to you. Now, what we do with the suffering that we feel 
is really sometimes to create more suffering. And I want to help you with that idea and help you find the resources to shift gears. You're all suffering and you're suffering tremendously. And we have a lot of ideas about the do's and don'ts that can help you and can help your children, which I'll get to. But for the moment, I want to explain a few things to you, not many, but about the brain, the nervous system, and intense emotions. Not knowing brings about fear, anxiety, symptoms in the body, because trauma is held in the body long after an event has happened. And because of that, the brain and the nervous system guide what we do with everything. The body is the source of communication when the brain cannot speak. And oftentimes when we're frozen when with fear, we're constricted, we get like this and we freeze. It immobilizes us. Now, the brain itself, the survival brain is meant to help us, but the way it helps us is by detecting threat. And when it detects it, it only has three options, which is to fight, to flee, or freeze. Meaning when it has no options, and many of us understand that, we freeze, we constrict, we retreat inward. Watch my body as I'm doing this. There's no space for anything else and the brain goes offline. So when you're flooded with intense emotional states, no thinking is possible, the escalation that happens, the hyper arousal of the, what we call the sympathetic nervous system, and I'm not going into detail now, although I hope to provide you with references and resources about this, but it endlessly amps up. And in the absence of knowing, the brain does all sorts of things to fill in what's not known. And unfortunately, usually it goes to the worst case scenario. That's the negativity bias that we have built in for survival. But in this case, it takes us to places that aren't necessarily true, won't necessarily happen. It goes to the worst case scenario, which then adds to our suffering remarkably. And the worry just spirals out of control. The body, however, the nervous system is a place we can locate to help us with this, to soothe the brain and the body and help us regulate our emotional states so that we can create space to think, to feel, and to move out of constriction. So notice the difference between this, and don't do it with me, but just please notice between this, watch my face because the social engagement system is in all of this for us, and this. More open, the space is here to breathe differently, and to feel differently. And this is the state we can get our bodies to go into, despite what the brain is telling them. The brain and the thoughts that we have are real in the moment, but they're not necessarily true. And they are not necessarily true. And therefore you can't take it as fact, as true fact. It's a perspective. It's a subjective experience that we all have. And when that happens, we're frozen. And many of you understand this entirely because you've experienced this, the worry, the suffering, the fear. We're here to help you with that, to help you regulate that so that you can then breathe a little differently and your breath is your best friend, regardless of anything else that you might think. It helps open up the channels, gives us space, 
And deep breathing is one of your best resources. And I'll show you how it works in a little while. I'm gonna take you through one or two experiences and then we will open things up for everyone. I'd like you to come with me on this journey though. It's a healing journey in the absence of knowing and in the face of acute stress, which we're all under. And if you can hear my tone of voice, if you can see how I'm speaking at this point, I think you can feel what I'm saying. I hope you can. And we'll talk about all of this later, if need be. But right now, I'd like you to drop from your head. Please drop from your head. Your head is not the source of information in the nervous system and drop into your body and just notice whatever it is that you notice. Notice the sensations that you might be feeling, the emotions that may go with it and just allow for it. And if you get overloaded, please stop because this is not going to contribute to any kind of negative experience for you. But just take a moment and check in. Check in with your heart like this and notice how it's beating. And you can also speak to your different self states, meaning you can tell your heart, I'm here. I will always be with you and I will keep you open to receive and to embrace my your children whenever possible but if a closed heart happens with fear you can't even do that your heart needs support and your own support is crucial so just gently put your hands on your heart if you don't mind and then gently move one hand keep it on your heart to your stomach area and just notice how these areas feel and what your chest area is feeling. Is it constricted? Do you feel any tingling or sensations? And if you do, that's okay, it's normal. All of your responses are normal in the most abnormal situation we can be in. That is a fact. And regulating our body, our nervous system, opens up the mind with greater clarity. It's the ability to think and just give yourself another few seconds just to check inward. Put your feet on the ground. This is a grounding technique that will always help you wherever you are and it goes with you wherever you go. So I'm gonna continue with this. If any of you are feeling like it's too much, please stop. I beg of you because there's no need to go further if that's the case. But for right now, I wanna teach you a bit of grounding to help you and it can go with you wherever you go and wherever you are. These are one of the techniques that we offer people in any kind of stressful situation. So ground your feet, meaning put your feet on the ground. You can close your eyes. You can leave them open, whatever is most comfortable for you. And for a moment, just rub your toes back and forth and feel the ground underneath you. And notice that your toes can move. And imagine that they're in sand, pushing the sand as you are on the ground. The ground is your space, your place. When we are grounded, we feel the solidity of what's underneath us. And that is the foundation for safety. So imagine, I like to ask people to imagine roots growing from your feet into the ground, spreading and developing. And just notice if you feel the connection, and as you do that, 
I want you to breathe with me twice, normal breathing, inhale and exhale and inhale again to the count of two and exhale to the count of three. And when you're ready, if your eyes are closed, you can open them. And I invite you to do one more thing before we continue, which is to look around slowly. Let your eyes lead the way and let them land on anything that is pleasant, objects, spaces, all around you, but let your eyes lead, not your brain, okay? And then ever so slowly, because slower is faster in this kind of work, ever so slowly come back to center and then to the other side, gently, slowly taking in some pictures or whatever you have around you. And if it's somebody else, take a look at them. Look into their eyes if you can and come back to center. Oh, and just notice how you feel right now. And you might want to write down something about how you feel right now in this present moment, which is the fundamental foundation for the future. And it can go with you wherever you go. The goal that we have now is to stay in the present, to be able to be mindful and aware, which is the source of healing. I'm going to see to it that you get a few um, points as to how to do this. And you can take it with you wherever you go and whatever situation you're in, this works. So I'm going to take another deep breath before I continue. And I want to share a couple of other things with you that can help you in times of acute stress. One of them is the piece about gratitude. When we're having an emotional overload and we're flooded and bombarded, if you pause and take a breath and take two more to bring your system down, you will notice that that's the only thing that will help you. Your breath is the source of life. And it continues to be that for all of us. We don't often think about it that way, but this is the time indeed to think about it that way. And just allow your breath to deepen and just see what happens as you do, okay? And notice how you feel right now. And right now, what I'd like you to do is have a negative thought, but not something huge, just a, something negative that really you can experience, just a thought, okay? And as you have that thought, I want you to pause. It, we call it the five second pause and go to gratitude. Gratitude for what you do have, gratitude for what you appreciate. And every time you have a negative thought, go to gratitude. It doesn't negate the negativity, but it balances. And gratitude and gratitude journals help the most, particularly in times of distress. Because if you can hold both states, the negative and gratitude, for what you do have, you create a balance internally and externally. So I want all of you to take a couple of seconds and tell yourself what you're grateful for. Just tell yourself what you're grateful for, even in this time of extreme stress. Just that alone. And then notice what happens in your system as you do that going from the negative to the gratitude for what you do have. And this is not anything that you make up. This is what you're grateful for. 
You're grateful for being alive. You're grateful for knowing that your children are safe where you are and that everything is being done to create a holding space for them. That's something to be grateful for. And I know you know that. I would invite all of you to keep a gratitude journal every day. It doesn't matter if it's the same thing day in and day out. Keep a journal. At the end of the day, what you're grateful for. And over time, this will get integrated and embedded organically into your system. And it doesn't matter what you write that you're grateful for. It all matters. You matter, and that matters a great deal to help you regulate. Now, there's a lot to say about all of this, which I'm not going to do right now. I want you to stay in the moment, and I want you to let me speak to you about compassion. Compassion for other people is something all of you as caretakers feel. But compassion for yourself, I don't believe you allow yourself to feel. Most people, when I speak about this, say, well, I'm going to be compassionate for me when all this is happening. That's selfish. Well, au contraire, Pierre, to the opposite. Not only is it not selfish, but if you're going to do what you do and offer compassion to everybody else, you better offer that to yourself first. A level of kindness, a level of understanding. When you find yourself saying things about yourself that are really negative, like I should have, would have, could have, I feel guilty that I didn't, any of and all of those things, bring yourself to feel kindness to yourself. We never can get enough compassion and bringing it to ourselves is key. Everybody needs to learn to do that. Not only is it not selfish, it's a resource and it'll help strengthen you and make you more available to meet other people's needs. But if you don't bring that, some of that to yourself, you're gonna burn out very quickly. And we all know what burnout feels like. So do this, be kind to yourself. Don't let yourself beat yourself up. There's no need to do that. Because if you do that, then you're gonna trash yourself in the process. And there's nothing worse than that. In Dr. order, Rappaport? yes, I'm sorry. Am I I'm so sorry? Long? Well, um, we have a, a lot of uh, okay that I'm getting privately. Um, this has been, I know, very calming for me in dealing with this week and everything that I have been involved with. And now I think we are all ready. Okay, great. Or how do I speak to my child on the phone? How yes, do I... I want you to I want to share some real do's and don'ts. Thank you. That we have written out. And it has to do with how to speak to your child when you're connected to them, what to say and what not to say. For example, we really invite you, and this is an invitation to speak to your child from a place of state of relaxation, let them know that you're okay, they don't need to worry about you, your job is to worry about them, and that you wanna hear everything they have to say. Don't ask a lot of questions, listen deeply, resonate with what they're telling you, and let them speak more than freely to you. And you may hear some very difficult things, but you can't let on that it's shaking you up. You really need to maintain this kind of presence when you're speaking to them. It's hard, but I know you can do it. And, also, and Dr. Rappaport, I'm sorry, just a segue to that is the flip please. side. Yes. Okay, how, how can I, as a parent, deal with potentially not being able to speak to my child on end or not even him or her being able to tell me where they're located. Yes. And you have to accept that. You have to accept that you can't speak to them as, you know, on demand. They are preoccupied. They're busy. If they're on the front, they're not going to be able to pick up the phone and talk to you. 
necessarily. It doesn't mean that anything worse is happening, but please understand that they cannot reach you at certain points by virtue of where they are. But that doesn't mean that you can write them off as gone. Please, that's the last thing you need to do. And hold this hope and the presence of mind to know that, to feel the resources that you have and that you can bring to your children when they do call you. I also, I appreciate Miriam, you're raising all of these points, which I'm happy to respond to rather than- Questions are coming in Q and A, fast and furious. So I will let you, I, I know that I, I want to say, no, um, I want to say one or two things to all of you. Please don't listen to the news incessantly. Here in Israel, what happens is people leave the news on 24 seven. Please don't. Whatever you do, of course you need to listen to the news once a day, twice a day. The news doesn't change more than that. And frankly, all you're gonna be seeing and hearing are stories, interviews, horrific images, that you do not need to be present with because they're re-traumatizing over and over again. Please limit the news and tell everybody around you to do the same because that's what needs to happen to maintain your sanity, okay? And if you can maintain yours, then you can help other people too. The other thing is, I want to say, and this may address some of what the questions might come to, we are born into connection. Being in connection is our birthright. And then life takes over and many things happen. The more you can connect to other people like you, the more you can create spaces of healing with people who are in the same position, Nobody else is going to understand what you're going through as much as another parent who's going through the same. Join the groups that are available to you. This organization has made umpteen resources available to you. Use them. Ask for, if you don't know of a group, ask them. They will direct you. These groups are crucial. They connect you to the very essence of what you're going through. And other people outside of this, they can offer you some things, but they cannot offer you what the people who you're really experiencing this with. Groups, connections, spiritual connections, prayers, community events that pay tribute to your children, that pay tribute to the soldiers. Those are the important resources that you that hopefully you will connect to more and more. Really crucial. Again, no one, none of us are born to be in isolation. And when that happens, we have to do everything to connect. I tell people, reach out and touch someone, metaphorically. That's the expression. But reach out and connect. And if people are asking you things or telling you things that you can't hear, just say, thank you. I appreciate your trying to help, but please, I don't think we should continue this conversation right now. You can say it politely and gently, and believe me, people will listen to you when you say it that way. Miriam, field me some other questions, please. Oh, this has been so helpful. We already received one request, could this happen again? Also, because I think what parents are hearing can help also their children who may have commanders who just not are able to give the emotional support right now that they may know that their team needs, but that everybody it's a war and everybody's experiencing what they're experiencing. Correct, and, and that, which is legitimate. and needs to be expressed in a safe place. So that being said, a mom asked, mm -hmm. when, when their child calls and is sharing some hard stuff, yeah. does the parent cry with them? How do they react? I, I, would, I would caution you 
Um, because if you cry with them and they can hear and feel your tears, that's going to dysregulate them. Of course, you feel it. And of course, you might be horrified by what you hear, but you have to maintain a, a presence of calm, at least to them. Cry afterwards. That's fine when you get off the phone. And crying is important. Listen, I've had three crying jags today in between doing this for other people. But today was a hard day. And, you know, I just needed to cry. And I did. And then I was able to carry on further. But if I couldn't express that, it would be suppressed. It would build. It would build. And then you would eventually explode. Because how much can you carry? So yes, cry when it's safe to cry, but not with your children. You can you can resonate with them. You can say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear this. I'm sorry that you have to experience this. Those, and we love you. We're holding you in our hearts. Those are the things that are most helpful for your children to hear. And it's hard, but I know you can do it for their sake. Miriam, we can't hear you. I think one of the most challenging experiences that we are experiencing as adults is that many of us don't have anything of our personal toolbox to pull from. That's most right. of us have most likely not experienced war. Yeah. And, 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 and that in of itself makes things challenging. So when parents are in their hometowns, how, mm -hmm. how can they answer, how are you doing? How is your child doing? Certainly they're very well-meaning, but I know that you touched on this. Is there anything else you want to add? People don't mm -hmm. want to just walk away and say, please don't bother me about this. I'm having right. a hard day. On the other hand, sometimes it's important to be honest with yourself and with others to say, now's not a great day to ask me. I appreciate it. Let's I think that's a beautiful time. answer, Miriam. Just pause with that. Say it again. <laughs> uh, weren't you listening? Yes, um, yes, but I want you to say it again anyway. What I, what I just suggested was that sometimes it's very important to be honest with yourself as well as those around you to say, right. I appreciate your asking. I'm actually not having a good day. You. And 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 leave it and leave it at that. It's I guarantee important. you, everybody will respect an answer like that. And what if they don't, children... walk away. <laughs> what about when children feel nervous yeah. to tell yeah. parents the truth? Yeah, about the scene or what's going on? I I I really believe in this strongly. I mean, I listen to a lot of children here, and the more they can share, the better. It's harder for the parent, but when this happens with your child and you're speaking with them, what was the exact question? I want to get this right, Miriam. Um, about um, about not pressuring a child. Right. When it, when when you feel that they may be holding back, you know, you have two minutes. Yes, how are you? How are you? I, I really touched on that. Do not ask them a lot of questions, please. Don't dig for more information. Whatever they tell you, accept with compassion. Oh, I'm so sorry that you have to experience this, but I'm here for you. And I will always be here for you. And the love that our community is sending you, they're sending all the time. You're in our hearts. You're in my heart all the time. And you know what? that actually warms my heart. And uh, if I may add something, as, as also a mom to two soldiers now, uh, they don't call me a lot. Uh, I get an emoji in the morning and good morning, and sometimes I'm lucky if I'm getting something in the evening. Uh, I was only able to talk to them once, but I'm just... I just listen to them. Listen, they are going through, they're in a war situation. They're very tired. They're uh, they just need to hear that you are okay, exactly. that you are here for them, that you are very proud of them, that you love them. 
and that you're waiting for them. Exactly. And if and and they cannot tell you what they're doing, they cannot tell you the location where they are. And uh, I know also the time difference make it a little bit oh, for sure. harder, but just listen to them. You can ask them, how are you? If you want to share something, just share. Um, and just let, let them know how proud you are of them. And uh, I think it will make what helps me. Yeah. And uh, I can share this. And uh, then uh, Dr. Rappaport can add is really to keep busy. Oh, I was going to get to that. Thank you. Oh, you okay. and I'll add it something if so, I need. Uh, you know, keep busy. And if you want to add is just, uh, you know, working or do whatever you work at or okay. do whatever you every day you do. Uh, that's something that uh, makes me a little bit forget. And, not, uh, not to forget, I'm sorry, but uh, to move it for a little bit uh, and concentrate it in positive here. Things. Exactly. Put it here is the way I like exactly. to talk about it. I yes. found myself, oh, I'll let you finish, Aviva, because you're no, no. right. I, uh, I have other, but I will let you discuss. No, it. please. If, please. <laughs> Um, and and the, the other thing is really, you know, other parents of lone soldier are really now your support group. Exactly. These, the, they are now your arm of comrades, okay? Because at the end of the day, your friends who doesn't have children in Chayalim who are not soldier, they can hear you once, twice, be for you, but only a mom or a dad of a lone soldier can really understand what you are going through and they will listen to you. So I know a lot in, in a lot of the communities, there is a WhatsApp group. Some of you are part of Garin Sabar. There is a wonderful group of mother of, Chayel, of Chayelim Bodedim that you can join. And uh, that's really, really important. Try to initiate even, you know, some some meetings in your area. You know probably other mother. If you don't know, reach out to us. We will make sure that we we will connect you to other parents in your area. Okay, we know who are the chayalim, and we know how to connect you. So um, that's that's something I wanna wanted to share with you. Yeah, and that's a tremendous resource. Nobody else is going to be able to understand you as another person who's going through the same thing. And other people can offer you words, but it doesn't have the safety or the depth that these small groups can create. And safety is crucial, right, for all of us. And if you don't have it, you have to create it with these spaces. I call them, uh, you can call them friendship circles, you can call them uh, groups, whatever is there, use it and use it more. Like I said before, we are born to connect. Uh, Not to, to that, be to this. Go ahead, Miriam, please. To, to that end, I just wanted everybody to know that groups such as a Facebook group for Mothers of Lone Soldiers and that type of information, will be included when receiving the recording of today's webinar. A lot of the different resources that Dr. Rappaport discussed, as well as resources that we have. Uh, somebody asked also about how can they share other types of resources in their town abroad? Um, we would say supporting the cause, how to make donations, where to make donations oh, to. That's and I know that we have received very interesting emails of people who we have met, Jewish and not Jewish, who were standing with you, were with you. We just wanted to know we're thinking about you. Noya, perhaps I, you I, have some I, idea. I'm sorry. Let, I'll let you finish. I wanted to add to that, but go on. Noya, perhaps you have some ideas of where a person can find in one concentrated area uh, to either donate to the IDF to do how to donate supplies. There are many, 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 many mm -hmm. things over the internet about supplies right. for soldiers. Noya, could you please? Okay, so 
So a few things. First of all, um, the IDF has opened uh, kind of uh, uh, um, an address where all the requests, okay, should be forwarded through the IDF and the Agudale Manachayal. I can send it to you later on. Uh, and the reason is that uh, it has to be it has to be gone through. Uh, no, there is there is a lot of uh, you know initiative, and when it comes to equipment, you want to make sure that it it stands with the standards of the IDF. So even if your son or daughter is asking for a helmet or uh, other protection or other fighting. Uh, that's not something that uh, the parents can 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 uh, can do. It has to go through the IDF, and I can send you the email and uh, the the phone number that you can call. I will put it in the chat uh, very very soon. Uh, I know you all wants to contribute, and uh, but this is the only way that I know official way that you can contribute. And also, if you want to donate, there is uh, the FIDF is the body in the US. Our program is uh, in cooperation with the FIDF. And you can always contribute to the FIDF. It goes to the Chayalim and for a lot of uh, welfare of the Chayalim. So Dr. that's Rapport, your way to contribute. Thank you, Dr. Rapport. Just one second. Some people have raised their hands. Okay. Please put your questions you. in the Q&A. We're not able to direct questions to those who have raised their hands. Please type your questions if you haven't already in the Q&A. Yes, Dr. Rappaport, thank you. So I, I just wanted to add to that, and you're spot on. Um, I have a lot of requests coming from my colleagues in the United States. We've, we've, I'm broadcasting a lot of information. We're sending blogs. I'm sending them because I had the... Uh, trauma unit of the New York State Psychological Association, and people are constantly asking what they can do. There are many scams out there, and that's why what you said is critical, because you need to have whatever you're donating to verified, and this is the organization that can do that. Otherwise, you don't know what's happening with your donations and your money if you're contributing. So please really go through the proper channels and your uh, both your money and your equipment and everything will get to the soldiers and that you can count on. Um, I also wanna share with you that um, I have a group of psychologists and colleagues in the United States who wanna help in whatever way possible and I know that Nefesh Benefesh provides resources in Canada, in the United States of people who are available to speak with you. And that's a huge resource too. Please use it, it's there. And our people want to help. They are also horrified and at the same time riveted by the good that's going on here. So please, what you said is perfect. And the other thing I wanted to share with you is that I've heard a lot of things here in Israel, and, but one thing that I think has given people a lot of comfort recently, and I'll tell you what I've heard said, is the position of Biden. That speech that he gave touched every heart here. You may not be a Biden fan, but... In that, one woman told me she felt like um, she was given a warm blanket. And that is priceless. So I just wanted to share that with you. And we are constantly broadcasting information, verified information to our colleagues abroad. And the New York State Psychological Association stands with you in total. I just want you to know that. Go on. Go ahead. I'm sorry, there was a, pro a problem with the Q&A, but our question just came through. So I'm hoping now we are okay. Again, I ask you to please put your questions in the Q&A. 
Um, somebody has asked if there is a way abroad to um, any type of organization that they could enlist to speak, to educate um, people abroad. All my Jewish friends are stressed, different levels, and everyone wants to feel useful. Um, I think that you can begin by turning within, whether it's the Jewish community center in your community or um, your synagogue, to be able to speak and share your experiences. I, I sent my sister abroad a video today. We had a siren. I had about 15 of my grandchildren staying with me. And I sent her the video of how we spend the time when a siren is going off. Now, these are all young children. Mm. And we had a certain song playing. We had, it was very important to keep them calm and to keep it light. And she appreciated it because we know what it is to fuel the fire. One person's anxiety can be very catchy to another person's anxiety. So I applaud your desire to begin to educate a community. And I would imagine, Dr. Rappaport, that's even a type of therapy for someone to do on their own as you begin to share with other people your experiences. Exactly. And I wanted to add that it, in terms of what happens in the shelter, the McClath, wherever you are, everybody knows where to go. But there was an amazing tape a few years ago that I have distributed about preparing kindergarten children to go into the bomb shelter. And these gonna note, these kindergarten teachers created a song and a dance to really em embody, the, the children embodied everything, hands up, and at the end they go under their desks and victory. And that is the most beautiful thing I've seen. Miriam, I would like to send it to you as well to use if you feel it's appropriate because it's amazing. And that is what we do here. We help the children. I was in with my grandchildren at one time when the siren went off in the shelter. And you know what I had them do? It was really great. I had them play out that they were the Iron Dome. And they had a ball sending it back, not to other people, but into the ocean. And they went through the the all these body gestures. And it was a real release. And it was joyful. And that is the point. And that is what you're saying, too. Thank you. Dr. Paul, Paul, there is another question here. I got it privately. What do you suggest about the brother and sister of the Chayalim? They're also going through something. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I think everything we're saying to the, to the parents, we could say for the siblings. They are going through the same thing. They may not say it directly because maybe they want to protect the family members, but believe me, they are going through the same thing and they need to be addressed the same way. Mm -hmm. As everything we've spoken about previously, let them express what they need to, let them share, let them have you as their deep listening partner. And then you can create all sorts of mechanisms like we were just describing to help them depending on their age. You have to have age appropriate aspects to this, but that's the, the easy part, okay? Just respect them, respect their suffering and their concerns, treat them some meditation, engage them in a little bit of kindness meditation. I do this with my grandchildren. And they can't get enough of it. A kindness meditation. May I be kind. May you be kind. May we be kind. That is so calming. And I do it with all ages. It's a. It's really what it takes. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. It seems that there is a little bit of a technical issue with... Uh, Parents not being able to put question and un question. Um, we're trying to deal with this. So um, in the meantime, why don't you ask the questions that you know will be asked? 
Um, yes. Actually, I would like to ask our technical support if there is yeah. a way to call on those people who yeah. have raised their hands. Um, yeah, we are going to right now give the people who have raised their hand the chance to speak. Wonderful. Thank you. Drawer, we just unmuted you. Can you ask and um, ask your question, please? Hi, this is Sarah. I'm um, Drawer, and I have two Kailin Bodadim, and we have one daughter who goes to school here. And you did answer a little bit, but her school is very heavily Muslim. I'm sorry, but it's 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 just a fact. And she, I don't think she's getting the support, and we're actually. Not sure. She proudly wears the Star of David. She's very proud of her Judaism. And we're just, you know, are there any resources that could help my child deal with, you know, her two sisters being both of them in the IDF and having this? It, it's very stressful. She's not sleeping. It, it's very stressful for a 16 year old. Thank you. I would like to let either one of you address it, and then maybe I can add something to that at the end, OK? okay if you want to, just otherwise. To, again, I, uh, what I would do, and I know I have uh, my daughter is uh, and just, to, again, to to give them the support and, and the love and to let them express uh, their fear. That's what I do just to have a lot of conversation with them. Um, and whenever you speak with your child, uh, try to add them to the conversation so they hear them. How old are your daughter? Them. She's 16. 16. Yeah. And um, I'm just curious if you've been able to address anybody from the administration. I have. An outside speaker and they're we, not interested? Oh. Oh, oh, I I asked the administration just to give her grace and, you know, not to have the teachers. She puts enough pressure on herself. She's a great student not to have them pressure her and just to be an understanding. And the answer I got back was we have a lot of students. Who, and there are five Jewish students in the school of 2,500 and right. like yeah. at least 20, 30 percent Muslim. Uh, it's a public school. Uh, so I'm just, you know, you know, yes. And I'd like to respond. Concerned also for her safety, but I'm not getting anything from the administration. Okay, so I'd like to suggest something. First of all, I don't know what community leaders you have that you can turn to, rabbis or people in the community that can at least perhaps speak and intervene um and offer some suggestions because if you just ask them for grace and this is the answer you're going to get unless somebody can come in with specific suggestions so and the other thought i have is include your child in activities like my grandchildren here are spending days donating their time raising money packaging goods if there is that kind of effort being made and if not created take those the jewish kids and let them get involved in helping in whatever way possible i think that's the best thing to do because then they feel they're doing something also so that's one thought that i had i wanted to share okay thank you drawer so much we hope that that was helpful feel free to reach out via the hotline um we're going to move on to tal Hi, can you hear me? Mm, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so um, first of all, thank you, this is wonderful. There've been several webinars and I'm really appreciative. Um, I, I had the pleasure last summer of being with Noya in a group of um, lone soldiers, mothers um, it, with Momentum and it, we're we're just in a supportive group together. So. I have to um, repeat what you were saying, Dr. Rappaport, that it is incredibly supportive. Twice yesterday, we got together as a group um, for an hour to just support each other. Um, but I I wanted one to offer something just based on what I just heard two minutes ago. 
I've been an, an Israel educator for 20 years, um, literally have used every um, curriculum that there is. Um, and if anyone wants to reach out to me, um, mm -hmm. please do. It is really uh, a horror place to be um, when you're, when teenagers, even middle school, it's reaching middle school now, middle school, high school, university, um, dealing with the issues that uh, students and children are dealing with, um, with regards to uh, Israel as a form of anti-Semitism or Jew hatred, whatever we want to call it. It's very challenging, um, but there are some ways. Um, and I think um, we need to build the children up, not make them defenders, but allow them to be on the offensive, not the defensive. And um, so mm -hmm. if any parents wanna reach out to me, it's a field I've been in for a long time. Um, I had a son at UC Berkeley for four years. So I've, I've lived it and I even experienced it at California University of Northridge myself at the age of 49. So please reach out to me. Um, but I did want to just um, mention, you know, my, my daughter, uh, my baby, who's 19, she's getting new recruits in the army. And um, she's been faced with... Um, a lot of uh, her own personal insecurity because she's, listen, she's getting these boys who are terrified and crying and crying for Ima and, and Abba. And I mean, they, they started the army the day after on Sunday, mm -hmm. Sunday after the fateful Saturday. So she's been calling me every day and I've been trying to exercise a lot of what you've been saying, Dr. Rappaport, um, uh, and I've been, you know, and now I've got <clears throat> actually because of this, I have some more tools. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been even just saying to her, like, you know, she's like, I'm doing a terrible job. And she boys who were pulling out knives. I mean, this stays in this circle and she's not on her, but because they're so scared. And she said, I didn't do a good job. I don't know. I feel so inadequate. I, and I said, you feel inadequate because you love these soldiers and you love Israel and you love the Jewish people and mothers and teachers always feel inadequate because we always want to do better. And that's why you feel inadequate. And it's not because you're inadequate. And so I think that we just have to keep giving our children confidence. And I'm just like the blind leading. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I've never been in the army. I mean, I have Israeli family, but I don't really know what I'm doing when I'm guiding her. I'm just Sounds like you actually are. I'm trying what you're doing. I'm sorry to say, but okay. people, people, I'm are, trying. people are asking to connect with you. What yeah. would be the best way to connect? with So you? I think to start, I mean, I, I a private, I don't want to like post it, you know, publicly, but maybe um, Noya should, I don't know if you should connect with me on Facebook or through Noya or, but I, I this is my field of expertise. So um, I, my name is, I don't, I, I have no access to the chat or the questions, You're not um, alone. but my name is my, my Facebook is Tal Palais. So you could get to me through Messenger, or if not, Noya has my contact information, but I can talk you through some of the stuff and I can also connect you to the right people at Stand With Us, or you can't leave kids alone with this. It is no. like a torture chamber in the schools. Yeah. And I, everyone should be safe. Thank you so much. I think that your words were very, Helpful and encouraging. Shira, I believe there's other people with questions. Yes, Lauren, you are up next. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, Dr. Rappaport was talking before about the difference between distraction and forgetting and I'm just wondering 
how to how to know whether you're kind of whether I'm going into like a dissociative state um as a coping mechanism or where is the line drawn between trying to distract myself um and just being in a fog so i'd like to respond to that it's a great question and the confusion that we all feel is what you're talking about as well and knowing what's what at any one point is is very difficult but I do want to say a couple of things. I invite people not to use the word distractions because it's not a distraction. It's choosing to focus on something else and usually something meaningful that you're doing. That's not a distraction. That's a focus on being able to do things. And it's the opposite of a distraction because it gives you a lot of energy. So that's the first thing, you know, our language matters and we hear what we're saying and the brain hears it as well. So I'm always asking people to please find a positive way to say what they are saying. And they're, and I give them examples and I help them with that. So that's the first thing. Dissociation, I have to tell you, is a survival skill. It is truly a survival skill. The problem is that when we're overwhelmed, we do dissociate, but that doesn't mean we forget. I want you to make a distinction, please, between dissociating and compartmentalizing. Because I have to tell you something. If I had to think about my grandchildren's future and they're serving in the army all the time, I go crazy and I couldn't do what I do. I literally tell myself, not now, there'll be a time for that, but now you have to stay focused on what you're doing. And that helps. And I invite you to do the same thing because you're not gonna forget, but if it floods you and overwhelms you, then you're not gonna be able to function in the way that you want to. So these distinctions really have to be made. And I so thank you for asking that question. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Zeldi. Um, sorry. Zeldi, you're unmuted. Hey, thank you so much for this incredible support. <clears throat> uh, really, um, just so grateful. So I have a little bit of an interesting situation. Um, I'm so, so proud of my son, but we don't have family support. Ironically, my dad was in the IDF and they became Hasidish and today they are not supportive. And But my father is just, He's a sweet man and he gets it. And he reached out to me and, you know, we, we put our political um, views aside mm -hmm. and he's just kind and compassionate. I have not heard from my mom. Mm -hmm. Nobody, none of my siblings, my mom has not reached out to my son. Nobody. Ironically, my, my father's extended family in Israel has. I am very close with them. They are second and third cousins. And I'm really grateful for that. Now, I practice acceptance and very tough, but it is very, very, very painful. I call my mother every Friday and all I heard, and I, I, I'm like praying that God give me the strength to not to react and to understand where she's coming from. She told my daughter on Sukkot, when my daughter was there for Sukkot, she said, my kids don't listen to me. I told my daughter that she should not send her son to the army. And she mm -hmm. did not listen. And I didn't even hear it from her, thank God, but I haven't heard from her. And it's very, very painful. Um, um, I think the best way I can support my, now the thing is, in order for me to support my son, I need to be strong and accept. And I'm holding on. But tomorrow when I talk to my mom, how do I, I want to be in a good state of mind for my son. I want to be strong. Right. But how do I, how 
how do I make boundaries with my mom? I'm going to wish her Shabbat Shalom, but how do I make that boundary? Um, I'd like to say a few things. I work with a lot of grandparents whose children have switched gears and they become Hasidish and they don't appreciate any of the values that they're being, that they have been given. It's a really tough situation, but and maybe it would be helpful to speak to someone privately also. And you can certainly give my information out, Miriam, if you want. And I know you have a lot of people standing by. This is one of those situations where I suggest you sit down with someone, even on the phone or Zoom, and speak to the whole experience. Because there's a lot of things that I would be asking you that I can't do now. Uh -huh. But it's not an unusual and for the moment what i will say to you is call your mother wish her shabbat shalom and that's it and don't get engaged in anything else with her because honestly no good will come of it at this point be respectful Absolutely. As, you yeah. are, as you are but limited really limited because it's only going to make things harder if you get engaged on that level with her. So mom, I'm just calling you to wish you a Shabbat Shalom. I hope you have a quiet Shabbat and a restful one. So. I will not engage. She will start and I will well, say mom. Can, but listen, yeah, what will you yeah. say? Let me hear. Let me I know. will say mom, I respect that we have different critical views, but now is not the time to discuss this. Now is the time to just, okay. you know, set that aside and just, Beautiful. We both love our. We both love the same person. That's so great. Does she respond? Does she say anything more? I hope not, because there's. Oh, she she does. Her. She has. Yeah, yeah. She goes on and on and on. And you and, have to understand. You have to set limits, even yeah. with parents. It's mm -hmm. important, and you have to just say, "Listen, I just said what I did. I really have to go. Shabbos is coming. Another time, please, or never. But don't say that." <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. I'm serious. Thank it's you. a real big dilemma that mm -hmm. I hear from lots of families. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, Amy. Amy, you're muted, um, but you're allowed to talk now. So if you unmute, we'll be able to ask, um, hear your question. Hi, um, my name's Amy. I'm serving. Is there a problem with Amy's connection? Yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. There we go, Amy. Um, Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, one of the questions I had, my son is there. He's serving on a frontline unit. Um, is there anything that I, I had a trip planned to come to Israel next week. Is there anything I could do if I go? Should I go? Um, I mean, it's hard to say. It's whatever you feel. You can come just to feel a little bit closer to him and here. Uh, I'm not sure you'll be able to see him because uh, right now, none of the soldiers are allowed out. And we don't know how long it will take more. Uh, and I don't think you will be able to visit him also because the, it's forbidden to go even to the area where they are. So it, it's beyond that. I, I is It's such a feeling of helplessness here right. that we can't do anything. I, I It's not about seeing him. It's about, can I be okay. more useful over there? Can I help? Can I, I'd like to say something to you um, because I've gotten the reverse question a lot. Tourists who are here, should they stay or not? Listen, the flights are really problematic right now and you should do what you feel is right for you. Okay. And if it's right for you to be here, believe me, you'll find things to, to do to contribute. <laughs> it doesn't take much. And I'm sure uh, the people at Nefesh Benefesh can make some suggestions for that. But you have to remember that it may not be possible for you to leave when you want to. 
it, it things are very unknown right now. My flights were just all canceled and that's what we expect. So if you come, you have to keep that in mind. And yes, you will be able to do things here, but I don't know that you will be able to do more than you can do there. And there's nothing worse than the feeling of helplessness. So first I would invite you to maybe see what you can do from there. And then of course you'll decide what's in your best interest because nobody else can speak to that but you. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have, oh, go ahead. No more other questions. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to raise your hands and we will answer your question. Dr. Rappaport, I really want to thank you for your time, especially on a Thursday night as we all get ready to get ready for Shabbat, where we are all praying. We'll be quiet on every way that we see the end of this war very quickly. The history that we learned about was a six-day war. We also learned about the Yom Kippur War. I remember very well where I was when the Yom Kippur War broke out. Sure. May we are all praying for peace, and, and may we be merited with seeing it very, very soon. Noya, anything else that you would like to add? Just to say thank you, and uh, be strong. I know, I know that's what I'm trying to do and positive and uh we are here for you remember you can email us we have also a lone soldier uh, email address you can call us uh we'll try to do our best and um just keeping my prayer that kulam yachzeru b'shalom and um tovim for good days that's that's my amen, amen and amen, amen. Thank you to everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.